Hey guys, welcome back to the Criterion Collection Review Series, uh, and today we are returning back to Akira Kurosawa uh, to talk about a film that I think is one of his more underrated, uh, we'll get into that more in the review, uh, but it's also one of his most emotional and uh, moral films, I guess, uh, and that would be 1952's Ikaru, uh, which is number 221. Uh, in the collection, I believe this is our first number 200, so here we are. Ikaru uh, tells the story of a man. Uh, he, he, he's sort of a bureaucrat, he's the head of public works, uh, and he's a man that sort of goes through his day to day um, doing the bare minimum. Uh, he has never taken a sick day because he believes that if he does, uh, everyone will find out that, that they don't really need him there. Um, you know, he's just kind of going through the motions at this point. Uh, it opens with a narration uh, telling us that this man, whose last name is Watanabe, uh, we find out that he has um, cancer in his, in his stomach, I want to say, um, which has grown to the point where there's no going back. He has a year left at best. Uh, and so he eventually does go see the doctor, and the doctor, um, in, a, um, in a sense, essentially tells him that he has less than six months to live, although Apparently this is a common practice in Japan that um, they won't tell people about when they have terminal diseases and they'll try to sugarcoat it in, in a way. He spends the first half of the movie sort of having a crisis, trying to figure out um, what he needs to do to fulfill his life before he dies, um, realizing that he's kind of been wasting all this time that he has had. Uh, and after kind of wafting around for a bit, trying to, he's partying, he's trying new things, but none of it's really fulfilling him. Uh, he realizes that he needs to do something for other people, he needs to actually do something with his job. Uh, and so he manages to find uh, this sort of, this public request uh, to build a park where this landfill is, or where this very gross, dirty area is. Uh, and then the film cuts to six months later, where he has died, uh, and then we're following, and the second half of the film is at his funeral, where we see how all the other bureaucrats and people he worked with uh, try to remember and honor him uh, while getting flashbacks of specific moments. And I think Ikaru works so well because of these two halves and how they work together. Uh, because the first half of the film is very honest, I guess is a good word to use. Um, you really do feel that tension and that despair and then when he's trying, like he's going out, he's, he's going out late, he's drinking, he's just, you know, he's, he's just doing whatever he can to try and make life have meaning or to do things he's never done before. Um, you feel that desperation. You feel, you feel how, how important this is to him. Um, and, and there's that tinge of melancholy in everything he does. Um, you can feel it in the way other people talk about him, the way his own son uh, clearly only wants him only wants to for his money and you and you sort of get a, an idea of like their backstory and all these emotions all these all this complexity is really really sold by the main actor Takashi Shimura who is a Kurosawa uh, regular and he has this incredible way of playing this character where in the beginning he's very meek he's very small you know really scrunched up like this uh, as the film goes along as he becomes more physically weak he, he seems stronger, he seems more confident, even though he is more desperate. Um, it's really fascinating. And, and so this first half does a great job of conveying to you uh, that, that empathetic feeling of, of, of knowing you're going to die and, and how you deal with it. And then what the second half does that is so fantastic in my mind is it shows the effect that it has on others. Where everybody has these stories, you know, he's left this park, uh, the people who seem to really be emotional about him and really seem to care about his death are the actual people in the neighborhood. There's this incredible sequence where all the bureaucrats are sort of sitting by at his funeral and are just, they're essentially taking credit uh, for having done it. They're, they all they all sort of downplaying Watanabe's role in building the park. Uh, and they're all sort of downplaying him and talking about him behind his back essentially and out of the public eye. Uh, but then the mothers who helped to um, to, who, who sort of initially proposed the park, uh, they come into the, the funeral and are just wailing there in so much despair and tears and truly you can feel how much they cared about this man and how sad they are that he's gone. 
And while these women are having their emotional moment, it keeps cutting to all the different men in the room, all the different, um, all those co-workers. And they all are just very, they seem ashamed. They seem embarrassed that they are not feeling the same way. Uh, and as the night continues and they sort of talk more about Watanabe's um, exploits and his accomplishments, um, they all realize that he did have cancer, he didn't tell anybody. Um, they realize he had cancer, they realize why he was so dedicated, and they all come to realize that, you know, he he was the real one that did it. You know, like, we're trying to take credit for it, but we wouldn't have done anything without him. While they end the night, sort of apologetic, you know, screaming to the heaven that they're gonna change, they're gonna do right by Watsnabi, they're gonna, they're gonna lead by his example. You know, the next day it goes back to normal. Uh, there's an incredible shot where one guy tries to, to speak up when they try to give another woman the, the, the runaround and they, everyone like stares at him, like tells him to, to cut it out essentially. Uh, and as he sits back down, it's an incredible shot where he is like, his head is above a mountain of paperwork and as he sits, the camera like pans down as he's being like consumed by it. Um, sort of showing the hypocrisy and the, uh, the uselessness, the, the inefficiency of the bureaucratic system uh, and how many people really do just exist within it. No one really tries to get things done. No one puts in the effort. Uh, they all just want to get by, essentially. While the movie is ultimately a criticism of that, I mean, uh, it was a new criticism of these government bodies and systems that don't actually help anybody, that are all out to, to help themselves. I think the, the stronger message, and it's the one the film ends on, is the, the philosophy or the idea that in order to live, you need to live for other people, or you need to, 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 to leave your mark in some way, where your actions speak way more louder than your thoughts or your words, um, where the reason Watanabe is going to, to live on in the minds of other people, he's going to constantly have... Um, you know, he's kind of constantly have space in their memories and in their brains is because he did something. It's because he took the time that he had left and against all odds accomplished something truly selfless. Putting everything on the line just to, to provide something for other people. And it's just such a beautifully well done film. It's very melancholic. Uh, it's very bittersweet. Beautiful sequence near the end where they show his final moments. It's the, it's the one on the, you know, right here on the cover where he's on the swing and he's singing this very sad, remorseful song about, you know, young people living for, for the old people that can't, for the ones that don't have as much time left, that have, that have had their time. I think Ikaru is a great example of how masterful of a, of a, of a filmmaker Kurosawa is. Uh, because, well, of course, the cinematography is gorgeous. There's so many great shots and movements and, you know, the performances are great all around. But I think in the hands of any other director, or most other directors, Ikaru would be a very um, cheesy movie. I think it'd be a very hard movie to, to take seriously and to, and, and, and to be honest. And I think the main things that give the film that genuine nature, that give it that impact, is the two halves. The fact that it's split up that way, where it's not just about seeing this one man turn a new leaf and and um, and, and sort of redeem himself in a sense, um, but it also shows the inability for others to do that. It also criticizes those who 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 continue to live their life without without learning that lesson. Um, but I also think it's just the way he presents things. There's a scene um, in the second half where they talk about um, the look in his eye or, or, or how, how powerful he seemed to be despite his weakness. Uh, and he, uh, Watanabe is trying to meet with like the head of the, of the, of the, the public works. Um, and there's like, a group of like tough guys outside, almost like muscle men, like meant to, to, um, to, to intimidate him to stop doing this. Uh, and when they try to intimidate him, there's this great shot um, where it's just Watsonabi looking directly at the camera. Um, and you see Shimura's face, and there's just so much power there. I don't know, you, you, you feel the... You, you feel the desperation, you feel the drive. You know, this is the, the, these are the eyes of a man who 
has nothing left but this one thing and nothing will get in his way. And that look is so powerful that the, 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 the muscle men back off. And one of, their, one of their head guys comes by and, and um, notices they're all leaving and he takes one look and even he's scared off, you know, even he's, he, he can't take it. And I think in the hands of most directors that would have been a very goofy scene, it wouldn't really have worked. But since we spend so much time with Watanabe, we spend so much time with him and with his character, um, we, you know, it works, it, it, it's powerful, it's... It's, it's again a part of this whole genuine, very empathetic whole. Um, and I think that's the strongest thing about Ikaru, is that it has so much empathy and so much heart and love poured into it. It's, it's, it's despite its, you know, depressing uh, subject matter and, and existential fear, there is this, this, this reaffirming coziness to it. Um, it's 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 a pleasant watch that that, that ends on an ultimately good note. It, it's still bitter, and but there is the sweetness is there, uh, and it's just it's I think it's one of Kurosawa's most underrated, and I believe that because of this edition. Uh, in terms of special features, it's uh, uh, it's it's very light. It, it includes a commentary track. Um, it includes two. It includes excerpts from two different documentaries. Um, one is uh, a Kurosawa like documentary series that they made in Japan um, that's on every single Kurosawa movie released by Criterion. Oh yeah, there's like there's basically two Akira Kurosawa interviews about making Ikaru. Um, and they're both really great and insightful, but that that's it after that. Um, the booklet included though is really nice. Um, there are two different essays. Uh, one is taken from an excerpt from a book about Kurosawa's films made in the 60s. Um, about Ikaru, so specifically at that time. Uh, and then there is one from an author uh, who moved to Japan and has a whole personal history with Ikaru. He's, he, he's an American author who moved to Japan. Um, and it's really great to get these personal and different looks at Ikaru, what it's about, and its power. Uh, and it's, I think this is a really good release. Um, the transfer was clearly rough. Um, the print they had doesn't seem to be that good. There's a lot of film grain, a lot of um, scratches and artifacts, thing, and artifacts, which is another reason why I think this is an underrated Kurosawa film. But I think it is almost an essential one. I think it's it's a it's a very different one than most of his films. There's no action, there's no crime, there's no intrigue. It's just a simple story of a man trying to make up for lost time and and and, and leave an impact on this world before he goes and it's 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 simply fantastic um but yeah so that's ikaru what do you think of it um we think of kurosawa let me know in the comments love to get your opinions on this kind of stuff uh if you like this video please like it uh please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos and more from the criterion collection review series uh and share this one around if you want more, if you want more people to watch it uh next time we are going to be going very cheesy, very out there, and we're going to be talking about David Cronenberg's Videodrome, uh, which I'm very excited to be talking about. Uh, but either way, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.